Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash and Supergirl. We're going to be talking about these new photos, the new information that has come from TV Line. The link will be in the description below to the article. We have to freak out. We've got our first look at the Flash suit, the new Flash suit, and it's looking pretty cool, if I'm honest. And also, we got a new look at Supergirl as well. So, very excited to talk about all of this with you guys in today's video. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the big thing. The big thing. The new flash suit is on the screen right here. This is really cool. I really do like this. And I'm going to talk about, obviously, I feel like it has a few flaws. I'll talk about that in a minute. But it's a big improvement on the Season 5 suit. So you'll see the Season 5 suit. I'll put a comparison on the screen. The Season 5 suit was just all over the place. It was way out of whack. Did not fit. His neck was sort of all over the place. It was all flappy and everything. His cow was a helmet. It didn't even fit on the suit. So looking at this new suit, what can we see that's different? So specifically, they've added some stripes. And we saw this in the Entertainment Weekly cover that they released. They took a few photos, but he didn't have the mask on because he was obviously using a different version of the suit. Because this cow is actually a cow. It's not a helmet. It doesn't look like it can, you know, detach in this form. And it's not like something that you can just put over and, you know, use it like a helmet, essentially, like last season. If you've seen the behind the scenes photos, you saw that it was most definitely a helmet. And, you know, they had real trouble around the neck area. And I think it really fits Grant. And I like the new stripes. I think the last suit was way too red. It was just pure red. There was barely any gold. The gold was only really on the belt and part of the arm, and that's about it. However, I think the one, you know, mistake with this, I'm not so sure. I think they should go back to the leather, to be honest, because this material is very thin, and you can see it. I think it looks cool. Probably going to look cooler in action, but from here, it kind of looks a little bit cosplay-y at points, but at the same time, I'm a big fan of it, so I'm a little bit conflicted, but it's such a big improvement on the Season 5 suit that, really, I'm just happy right now. And so, you know, the big difference, no cow in the past suit, and then the Season 6 suit, we've got a cow that's fully attached, it looks like the emblem's still the same, and we've got the new additions of the gold sort of stripes. However, I think one of the weaknesses of this new suit is the earpiece i think this is obviously more like jay garrick in the comics and more like barry allen in the comics but i really do like the earpiece that we have on the tv show and it's a bit different doesn't exactly you know match up to the way it was before it was more of an actual like zigzag lightning this is more bent it sort of goes up and then goes out and it's a bit more bent and I'm not so sure about that, but this is just one angle, and I'm very impressed so far. Obviously, I have a few queries, but it's just such a big improvement, I'm really happy. Okay, so, going to the TV Line article, we're going to read through a bit of what they tease. So, this is a synopsis of the new season. Picking up moments after Nora was erased from the timeline, Barry and Iris will come to realise the infamous crisis is arriving five years sooner than expected. And it's like stepping into a landmine says showrunner Eric Wallace, all of a sudden, the future is today, and that turns everything upside down. You'll see each member of Team Flash react in their own unique and sometimes tragic way. As if that were not enough, what he goes on to say and what the synopsis says is, the pre-crossover run of episodes dubbed graphic novel number one will burn fast and hot with the introduction of Dr. Ramsey Rosso, a renowned scientist who shares a really great relationship with Caitlin, but is fated to become a villain known as Bloodwork in the comics. Related to the new threats, Iris, the journalist, will get pulled into a very deep mystery while working to make the citizen grow up real fast. Due to the accelerated Flash Vanishes deadline, that's going to lead into Iris, you know, fully going into it. And so speaking of the crisis, and we shall be... Tom Cavanaugh's newest Wells is integral to not just the first half of the season, but his storyline leads directly 
to the crossover, says Wallace. So that is an essential synopsis of what we are to expect. Nothing really specific to break down because we talked about this before. And it's just, you know, Iris is going to be sped up. That's kind of a new thing. It's going to be sped up because of that deadline. And she's going to try and grow the system very fast. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that this season. And a bonus spoiler on their site. They revealed the first third of the season will make time for one or two additional nemesises, including a guest cameo that will be fun for the fans. So what he is teasing, I believe that the guest cameo will either be a famous actor, but I think it's more likely for a cameo to be a famous DC Comics character, and I think fans will really, really like that. I don't have a specific guest right now, but, you know, it could be anyone, so leave your theories in the comments down below, and the one or two additional nemesis is, is just going to be the villains of the week. Okay, so... Now let's move on to Supergirl. So that Flash stuff was really exciting. And now we've got our first look. Well, one of our first looks at Supergirl this season. And it's one of the coolest looks. It's the best look that we've got at Kara in her new Supergirl suit. And this photo is simply fucking awesome. I love this. This is amazing. I love her new suit. I've said this many times. I think it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, you don't always find you know, an upgrade, you're, you know, you're so attached to the past suit, you're like, eh, I don't know about the upgrade, but this suit, man, it looks really good, and I'm really excited to see it, this photo is very exciting, you can see Guardian behind Kara, and also Nia, and I believe that's Brainy, just below her, and so, you know, looking at her suit, you can see the changes, and you know, it's a bit more dark, and I really like it, I really like the colour scheme, and obviously, Melissa's got her bangs, she's got her new hair, she looks really cool, and so I'm very excited for this first episode of the season, and seeing the new suit, seeing the new hair, seeing how everything changes, so yeah, very excited about that. Okay, so let's move on to talk about the synopsis like we did with The Flash, so this is how it goes via TV line. We think of this as our ode to Black Mirror, showrunner Robert Rovner says of Supergirl's fifth season, which finds our heroes battling technology itself. The hope is that people would be more engaged with what's going on and wanting to make the world a better place, but they seem to be more engaged with technology. We explore how that affects our characters and how our villains try to exploit that on a human level. The relationship between Kara and Lena is the emotional centre of the season, Jessica Queller says. Kara's betrayal puts the friendship front and centre. Meanwhile, as Alex and Kelly are getting to know each other a lot better, Nia and Brainy are having a slightly more challenging romantic journey ahead of them. Brainy is a little different, the showrunners acknowledge. And forget everything you've heard about Julie Gonzalo's character, Media Maven, Andrea Rojas, aka the superhero Akrata or Akrata, I'm not sure, someone actually corrected me recently about that, and I think I said it wrong, but correct me again in the comments because I forgot. So, they go on to say, we put on our own Supergirl spin on Akrata, Rovna says, one that is unique to our show, and on the big bad front, expect Leviathan's agenda for Earth to play out on a season long arc. So that's uh, some massive reveals in there that I had no idea about. And so they're putting their spin on Andrea Rojas and her character. That's very exciting. I really do like, you know, the way that they twist from the comics on the show. And also very exciting to see that Alex and Kelly are getting to know each other and Brainy and Nia are going to have more of a challenging journey and I look forward to that journey. But the big thing is that they revealed Leviathan's storyline is going to be continued and played out as a season long arc. It's not just going to be the first part of the season. I think the first part of the season's going to be, you know, a bit of Leviathan, sort of how Red Daughter was used, but I think a bit more this season. And it's going to be more about Sean's brother in the first part as we lead to Crisis. So, yeah, very exciting. Nice reveals. And so a bonus spoiler. Quella promises a big twist 
for Eve in Episode 2 and it's not what fans might be expecting. I'm guessing we're going to see some revelations to do with Leviathan. I don't know if she's actually a good character or not, but I'm guessing somehow she's going to come back into, you know, the favour of Supergirl and her friends. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. This has been awesome talking about this. I really like these new photos. Very excited. We got our first look at the Flash's new suit. I think it looks pretty cool. Much better than Season 5's. And also, this amazing photo from Supergirl and some cool synopsises sort of giving a rough idea of what's to come. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. I see room.